Hello, um, my name is Giovanna Johnson. Um, and I have grown up in the Christian church or whatever. <laughs> and worship has always been a really important part of my life. Um, and it wasn't until I got to college that I really started getting serious about my faith. Um, and uh, my sophomore year, so last year, um, I started getting really heavily involved with just worship on campus. Um, and there's this thing called spontaneous worship that we uh, that was started where people would just text in the group chat and be like, oh, I'm worshiping in the chapel if you want to join. So I was um, loving that. And one night, Adam, me, and another student went to the chapel and we started just singing through scripture, specifically Matthew 6, the part about um, not being anxious. And we were just singing um, and I really felt the presence of God and it was just awesome to worship and praise him um, with that passage knowing that we don't have to worry about anything of this world because God has everything under control um, and then fast forward a few months and this song that we sang in the chapel after um, working on it with Adam it's now on an album that's 20 songs long that's about spreading Jesus's name and it's just awesome to think about where I've come like in my faith journey and just seeing how God has carried something from the fall last year um, to now and seeing where it is. And so um, I just really take away from the song, I will not worry, um, just knowing that there's no reason to ponder on um, anxiety and stresses of schoolwork, something so simple or family issues or anything because ultimately God has everything under control in our lives and he can use um, any situation for his good. And so um, I just encourage you to think about all of the worries that you might be pondering on, like Brooke was talking about, and just releasing those worries to him because he can, he has everything under control and um, you shouldn't be anxious about tomorrow because tomorrow uh, will worry for itself. Today my heart is anxious Today I doubt success But yesterday in my worry Christ came and helped me through my mess If I know its plans are for me Why do I tremble at the unknown? Says, look at the birds of the air, how they fly. If I feed them, will I let you go? Is life not more than comforts? Is life not more than all that I own? If worry gains me nothing, why don't
My name is Peter Stauffer. Um, I'm a senior at Grove City right now. Um, and I've been jamming out to worship my whole life, pretty much. Um, and I'm so grateful for my parents and for how they've instilled uh, a passion for worship in me. Um, I have been able to be blessed to be a part of worship teams uh, all throughout college. Um, and it was, it was kind of through that, as well as um, a couple other organizations, where I, I got, to, got to meet Adam. Um, and it's been so cool. I was, a little over two years and a, two years ago now, um, and um, it's been so cool just seeing this whole process unfold. It's been so cool seeing the Lord work uh, through Adam, through this music, and through this team. Um, and so, one of the th big themes of all of these songs that have has just really stuck out to me and really stuck with me through this process, as well as um, in looking at how this music has the potential to affect so many people. Um, the biggest thing that comes to mind is just joy. There's so much joy in all these songs. There's so much joy in the truth of these songs and of the, of the story that these songs portray. Um, I remember sitting outside one day uh, after like a long rehearsal with Adam um, and just, just having this image of, of just children dancing to the, to the songs we're singing um, and to just the joy that comes with that and the joy that, 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 that Jesus brings, that the gospel brings. Um, and so this next song um, is called Coming Home. It tells the story of the prodigal son. And um, I think it's a really powerful, powerful story of just the joy that we see the Lord displaying um, as his children come home to him. Uh, so thanks for coming out. We, uh, we really appreciate it. And this next song is Coming Home.
I set off on my own with all I had in search of home. I wiped my brow and took a step. My father waved, it's time to go and see the world, so I left. I'm leaving home. Today's the day my life will finally start. I'm leaving home. No more cares, I've got my share and now I'm gone. And I thought, where is home? Is it possible I've made a great mistake? Where is home? I thought this world would give, but all it did was take. My prayers hoped for the best and gave him to God to do the rest and then one day you'll never guess who came walking down the road he's coming Sorry, Father, I did not obey and turned away blindly. But please, I ask to serve with what is left. It's only me. And he looked at me and said, Welcome home. I'm welcome home. Place a robe and ring and sandals on. Yet never once did I ask for a goal to share with friends and stay in love this trade more. My son, all I have is yours.
not like him he spoke the other men had heard yet did not trip into pride rather humbling himself head down low I'm a sinner he cried he sent his prayers up Knowing he can buy this love Forgive me Have mercy I'm guilty Self-exhaust If my heart's devoid of a purpose or plan A sinner I fall, no, I cannot stand Before you, my God, so my head's in my head As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Though only possessing two small copper coins, she gave it all to the Lord. I would guess that all of us here have more than two small copper coins, but are we, get, are we willing to give that up? Have you weighed the cost? Are you like the wealthy Pharisees, giving up what is comfortable to lose? Or like the widow, offering everything, saying, Jesus, all I have is yours. What will it take? Everything. Who do I give to? All the suffering. Yo 
On the night of Passover, Jesus sent his disciples to go and prepare a place for them to have one final meal. As he took the bread, he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, until they meet again one day in his glorified kingdom. Afterwards, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray with his disciples. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed beyond the stars. My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Before I go, so give me 
these prayers I send to you beyond the stars. This cup is my burden to bear. Katie, as Adam said before. 
And I also have notes because if I don't, I could go on for a lot of hours, as my husband who's in the back can tell you. So, um, but before any of that, I do just want to say what an honor it is to be here tonight. Um, as Adam had said, and everybody's talked about in their testimonies, this has been about a year, I guess a year, in coming. <laughs> Feels like a little longer some days. But um, it's been a real privilege to be able to join in from Guatemala and um, go back and forth and coordinate and all of that. And then really just a joy and a, an honor to be here tonight. And um, yes, especially with uh, knowing just the, the way God has brought kind of our stories together in some ways through prayer and, and different things. So, so that said, um, some of our story, my husband Aaron and I and our four kids are missionaries in Guatemala. In rural Guatemala, we've been there full time as a family for the last 14 years. And um, all of our children were born there. We have a daughter and two sons. And then our last daughter we, a daughter we actually were able to adopt a couple years ago. So it's been a real neat um, blessing to, to raise them there and just to see how God has moved and all that. So in 2015, I became pregnant with twins. It was my fourth pregnancy. And um, from the beginning, it didn't really look right. But um, early on, the first twin went to be with Jesus at about nine, ten weeks. And um, after that, the complications kind of started to get a little bit more intense. So our second child, or our second twin, was we named him Gabriel. I was a boy, and he held on, and we continued to fight for his life as well. So around 18 to 20 weeks, I ended up having to go into the hospital. Um, I was losing a lot of blood and needing more blood transfusions. And actually, they discovered that for whatever reason, if I went on complete bed rest, it helped with the the issues that were going on. So I ended up in the hospital for about two months, and um, and Aaron and the kids stayed in another back in our town, so about seven hours away. But the way God filled that hospital room, and I won't go into tons of details, but he just really um, used that time to really speak to us in deep ways, even as we were separated, and, um, and really start to show us during that time the beauty of the body of Christ, and that it does go beyond geographical bounds, and um, we just had a lot of people praying for us, and some people from this church praying for us, and I know we had never even met, but um, it was just incredible to see the power of what happens when when the body of Christ comes together united in prayer, and so thank you for that, too. So at about 26 weeks, um, well, I should say, we had a, a team of doctors. We were at one of the best hospitals in Guatemala. We were super blessed to be able to be in that hospital um, and we're receiving excellent care. The goal was to get Gabriel to about 28 weeks, but at 26 weeks, um, it just wasn't gonna work anymore. And so I was actually taken to the OR for an emergency C-section and Gabriel passed away somewhere on the way to or during that surgery. So um, without going into too many details, just because it was mentioned earlier, um, there was a need for a lot of blood transfusion due to, it was a chronic abruption is what they finally decided, placental abruption. And my blood type is not really totally rare here in the States, but in Guatemala, they, most everybody is negative and I'm a positive blood type. And so there was a lot of um, concern over that, <laughs> was just receiving the blood and figuring out how to get that. And so um, that was what was alluded to earlier. And again, God just really provided missionaries and um, different Guatemalans even that happened to have more of a European descent and were able to give blood, really came in and, and did that. And so they were able to keep me alive during the C-section with um, lots of blood transfusions and lots of fluids. And afterwards, um, our doctor, who we, is just a wonderful man, came and said, you know what, she was, a lot worse, and we've kind of figured out where the problem is, but it's bad. So we're going to put her in the ICU, and if she makes it through the night, then I think we'll be okay. And so people prayed again that night, another testament to my my life here still on this earth, and um, woke up the next day, obviously. And while I was better and had not passed away, they, there was a lot of fluid on my lungs due to the fluids that I'd received during the surgery. So they um, 
just said, let's see how this goes. I was really struggling to breathe. They had me on oxygen and said, let's take it a day at a time and see what happens. So um, I woke up, and that next day was a real bittersweet one. I was very happy to be on this earth, even though I didn't know all that had been going on, but to still be with my husband and my kids. But at the same time, just um, beginning that grieving process, and while Gabriel's death wasn't a total shock, we had really believed that we were going to make it to 28 weeks, and and so the timing of it all really uh, went down differently than we had thought. And so in that, there was just a lot of questions that I had and confusion and, and again, just starting the grief process. And um, that afternoon, I was lying in bed and just asked God, you know, why, and which we don't always get answers for, and I've had to surrender that a lot, but just where are you in this and what's going on? And I've never had this before or after, but he really was, I think a vision is the best word for it. And it was like he just gave me a glimpse into what was going on in heaven at that moment. And um, I just saw him holding our son Gabriel, and I couldn't see his face, but the joy that was pouring down over him, I mean, it was just incredible. And I'd never seen God, our Father, with that kind of joy before. And um, as he turned, as he was just singing over Gabriel, he turned, and there was our other twin sitting right there in the other arm. And... Um, and then I turned and saw these angels just just worshiping God and, and singing praise over these two little babies that had come home and were in the Father's arms. And that began for me, a, or became a place, I should say, of where healing could begin. I, you know, didn't, these weren't new concepts to me that God was our Father and a joyous Father, but um, it was the first time I'd really experienced that and seen God in that way, and it, it became a place to to grow from through the next several years. So I, um, so the next days were a little rough. I was still not getting better and my lungs were actually getting worse. Again, unbeknownst to me, thankfully. But um, on about day six, I think it was, they came in and said to my mother-in-law, who's also a nurse, Erin's um, family is down there in Guatemala also. And they said, she's gotten so bad that we have decided that if she does not get better today, we're going to go ahead and intubate her and just have her, you know, sedate her and intubate her for two weeks so that we can let her lungs rest and heal through all of this. And so that afternoon we were eating lunch together and this lady came in, and again, no one had told me any of this, thankfully. And so this lady came in that we had not met and she said, um, hi, I'm a, a lady in the church here. You've been on our prayer chain and I wondered if I could just come in and pray with you guys, take some communion, and um, you know, she said, I'm in the middle of a 40-day fast, and this morning I really felt like God gave me a word for you guys. Would it be okay if I just shared with you? And obviously we were like, yes, that'd be wonderful. So we did have this prayer time and worship time, and it was powerful. Again, to not go into too many details, but the main theme around all of it was revival, and she asked at the end, you know, is there witchcraft in your area? I'm, I'm feeling some of the stuff. And there is, and we actually learned a lot more of the, um, just how active it still is in our area. And, um, and again, I'll skip the details, but just strong, strong roots and foundation and still active witchcraft. And so as we were praying against that, uh, really the theme became about revival and that that is what God was doing. And um, we had this commun time of communion afterwards, prayed through some things, and then she said, the words that God gave me for you are, it is finished. And I remember my mother-in-law was like, well, that's wonderful. Like, if we could be done with this, <laughs> this is the best words I've ever heard. And so, but we also were exhausted. And so my mother-in-law went back home, and I went to bed that night and woke up the next morning, and this doctor, who was a neat young guy, a resident, and he came running into my room. We'd had several talks. He was an atheist and just talked through different things. And he came in and he said, have you seen your x-rays from this morning? And I was like, no, you know. And he's like, OK, well, I'll be right back. So he runs back out, comes back in, and he's got my x-rays from a day or two before and the ones from that morning. And the day or two before were completely white, which is fluid. And the ones from that day had not one speck of white on them anywhere. And he, of course, would not use the word miracle, but he's like, this isn't possible. He's like, I thought we had a new patient. I don't know, you know, how could this even happen? And so 
I filled in the gaps for him, told him this was a miracle. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is God. <laughs> but but it, um, it really, I mean, everybody in that hospital knew. I had gone through several units by this point of, you know, different areas of the hospital, different departments. And I mean, I just had people coming by. It was like they could come and say, oh, you, you did it, you know, or not you did it, but you're going to get out of here. I think there was a lot of doubt for a while. And so it really was a testament to everybody there. And um, it was just a powerful thing. And to have it confirm this word that we were given of it is finished was really what we stood on and stuck with us for several months. And so, um, and to continue to. But that phrase, um, as we continued to go through the grief process, obviously afterwards, again, just being so very happy to be here still with my kids and have received that blessing. But um, we'd really had our eyes opened to a whole new way to live in faith and things that my old wineskins weren't a faith couldn't handle anymore and I wasn't sure what to do with them and so questions and growth and um, and also just a desire to be in heaven you know my kids other kids are there and just that longing and God had been so close and and there was a questioning of why am I still here though and and what's going on and so during those months that turned into years of I'm just continuing to heal coming back again to a place of God as our good, good father, but also coming back to a place of saying it has been finished, that that this isn't our home, this earth isn't what holds all of our hope, that, that Jesus' death, that moment when he, the veil was torn and he conquered death once and for all, that is where we, we live from, is, is all that was accomplished in that moment. And um, yeah, as we go into this song, you know, this is, this speaks to the power of that moment. And I'll leave it there. to have hope in a world which is dark and cold how do you love when you know so much grief how do you hold on when you to a cross paid a 
We want to thank you guys again for coming tonight. And um, we're going to do one more song after this. But we want to take a little bit of time before that. Um, this hopefully has been a night where you've seen who Jesus is and remembered just what he's done and seen our good, good Father in a new way. Maybe you felt your heart stirred in a way that it hasn't for a while. Or maybe you've just been reminded of the power of God and who he is. Maybe the Holy Spirit is drawn close in a way he hasn't ever or in a long time. As we go into these next few minutes, we just want to invite you to sit for a little bit with God, the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, to let him move in your heart. If it's a place to come back to him after some time apart, or if it's a place to just say, oh, it's so sweet to sit here in your presence, God. Or if it's a night where you've never, never moved into surrendering your life to him, to accepting his love and his saving grace, then we invite you to take that step tonight. When the concert's over, we're going to be up here, and staff from this church will be up here. And if you guys need prayer, or if there's something you want to speak out that God did in your heart tonight, we invite you to do that as well. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love, your great, good love. Lord, we thank you that when all is dark, when life is confusing, when this earth reminds us of its instability, when we're reminded of our human frailness, God, of our sin and our weakness, Father, that in the midst of that, you are good. That you are a good Father who loves his children more than anything. God, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for the blood that you spilled on the cross. We thank you for going all the way for us, for choosing death itself to go to hell and back just so that we could be yours, so that we could come into your family. We thank you that the veil was torn, that that was always a part of your plan that you knew you would do whatever it took to bring us back into communion with you, back into your family. That you had a rescue plan from the beginning, Father. Even when you knew we'd go astray, even when you knew our sin would get in the way and our frailty, you never gave up. You never stopped pursuing us. You never stopped chasing us. And you never will. Holy Spirit, we thank you for coming. We thank you for dwelling among us. And inside of us, we thank you for the seal that you have placed on our hearts. We thank you for your presence, for your comfort, the way you guide and you cheer. We love you, Lord. We love you with everything in us. We thank you for this time. time to lift our eyes to you again, to open our hearts, to remember who you are.
titles at the end of the road. And there's a series of hallelujah choruses that we sing throughout it. And I would like to invite you to sing along with us whenever you hear them. So the choruses will say, hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah, he's alive.
bow your heads with me. I would like to pray this prayer um, to close us out. So, Father in heaven, would you pull us a little closer to you? So now and forever and always, we will be in your presence, looking in your eyes, gazing upon the one who made us, who knows us, and loves us. Father, would you let it begin? Would you let revival begin and fill us with the water of eternal life that may only be found here at the well? For you and you alone have the power to grant such gifts. You are the healer of disease. You tell the dead to arise. You raise up our spirits and illuminate our hearts with joy. For as we seek, knock, and pray, we have confidence that you are listening. You are present, and we will find you. Father, you give us purpose and a place. You place fire within our hearts so we may shine a little light in this world and share your gospel and power with all whom we come to know. You make this possible because your love knows no borders. It knows no ends. It flows like a river with no bed. Therefore, since this is true, I ask you to help us to see this truth in new ways here today and as we leave. I ask this so we may not worry and be able to place our trust solely in the name of Jesus. For you have promised many things to us and you have prepared this great feast for us to celebrate at, Lord. And I am excited for the day that we will be coming home. But I pray that you would bring many others with us. I want to see people come to know you. For how can it be that us, though once lost, are now found and forgiven by you? God, your love is far greater than any other we can know. You leave the 99 for the one. You knew the cost and you paid it. Though all we have is two coins, you look at us with love, show grace, and bring our hearts to you. I thank you for this, Father, because we can trust in your promises. I know that as we ask you to come into our hearts, to be our saviors, that we will dwell one day with you forever, that you will be our Lord, King, and Savior for all eternity, and all the wrong in this world will be made right, for you are just and you are good. I know, God, that as we pray and we send our prayers beyond the stars, that you are listening to us. You hear our prayers and you answer them. Thank you for answering our prayers and for showing up time and time again. Father, because of what you have done for us, we have been given great confidence for you said, it is finished. Our worth and our value have been settled at the cross. We need no longer fear anything because we have been adopted into the holy relationship between God the Father and God the Son and given the Holy Spirit as a result of what he has done. So Father, we will run this race to fulfill this task set out before us to do your will and hold all of these things in our heart. Trust not in what is seen, but that which is unseen. For we know that you're with us, that you will meet us at the end of the road. 
I pray all these things in your mighty name. And thank you for this time here tonight, Lord. And all God's people said, amen. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. It means so much to us um, to let us share this story and to share this music. This is also the first time this entire group um, has been together to perform this music. So this is such a joy for us to be able to share this tonight. We will be around um, up here if anybody would like to talk or needs prayer um, about anything that has happened here this evening or anything that's been said. Um, we also have stuff out in the lobbies. We have stickers with the logos. Please take one. Um, and there's also t-shirts for sale. Uh, yeah, so thank you all for coming, and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed evening.